Both innate and adaptive immunity involves many cells that may act in combinations to eliminate infection, or other abnormal conditions. They can be categorized as, cells of the innate immune system and, cells of the adaptive immune system. The innate immune system comprises mostly the cells from myeloid progenitor. They are, neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, monocytes, and mast cells. Neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils are also called polymorphonuclear leukocytes because of the varying shape of the nucleus, which is usually lobed into segments. They are characterized by the presence of specific granules in their cytoplasm, which contains a combination of chemicals such as antimicrobial agents and hydrolytic enzymes. Neutrophils are phagocytic in nature. They have multi-lobed nucleus and stains with both acid and basic stains. Neutrophils are the most abundant leukocytes and are short-lived. Neutrophils increase in number in the bloodstream during infection, and are responsible for the elevated white blood cell count seen with some infections, which is a well-known clinical indication. Neutrophils are the first cells that act at the site of tissue damage to eliminate pathogens by phagocytosis. They are mainly involved in the elimination of bacteria and fungi. Basophils are non-phagocytic in nature. They have a bilobed or trilobed nucleus. They take up the basic stain methylene blue and appear blue in color. Their lifespan is a few hours to a few days. Basophils release pharmacologically active substances from their cytoplasmic granules such as histamine, which escorts allergens out of the body, and heparin, which prevents clotting. They primarily combat allergic reactions. They also help in the secretion of cytokines involved in the maturation of T helper cells. Eosinophils are modal phagocytes. They have a bilobed nucleus. They take up the acidic stain eosin, and appear red in color. Eosinophils are present in almost all immune responses, most notably allergies. However, they also fight off parasites by secreting membrane-damaging granules. Mast cells have a single lobed nucleus. They reside in the connective tissue around the blood vessels, and mucous membranes. Their lifespan varies from months to years. They are typically involved in wound healing and the inflammatory response by releasing chemical mediators, such as histamine and cytokines. Mast cells also have important functions as soldiers of the immune system and are early producers of cytokines in response to infection or injury. They are active against many parasites and various allergic tissues. Monocytes have a kidney-shaped nucleus. They differentiate into macrophages and dendritic cells to elicit an immune response. Macrophages are the most efficient phagocytes. They have a single nucleus. They leave the circulatory system by squeezing through the walls of capillary vessels and keep watching for pathogens or dead cells. Therefore, macrophages are the first line of defense of the innate immune system eliminating a substantial number of targets. Macrophages engulf and process pathogens, cell debris, and cancer cells. Thereby, they also have a role in the activation of T-cells via the mechanism of antigen presentation. Macrophages are involved in wound healing, tissue regeneration, and pro-inflammatory activities. Their lifespan varies from months to years. Macrophages live longer than neutrophils and are especially important for slow-growing or chronic infections. Dendritic cells are present in tissues like skin, lungs, and intestines. They can easily identify threats, and act as messengers for the rest of the immune cells. They are indeed considered a bridge between innate and adaptive immunity. Adaptive immune system comprises of cells from the lymphoid progenitor, and the cells are called lymphocytes. There are three populations of lymphocytes. They are, B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, and natural killer cells. B lymphocytes are called B cells as they mature in the bone marrow. When B cells leave the bone marrow, they express antibodies, which are nothing but antigen binding receptors. A B cell that has not encountered any antigen is known as a naive B cell. Once it encounters a specific antigen bound to it, it starts multiplying rapidly forming two kinds of progeny. One is the memory B cells that have a long lifespan, and express the same antibody as its parent B cell. These will be involved in future infections by the same pathogen. The other one is the plasma cells that secrete enormous amounts of antibodies. They may have little, 
or no bound antibodies on their membrane, as they secrete everything. They have a short lifespan. T lymphocytes mature in the thymus gland and are therefore called T cells. During maturation, they express T cell receptors. Unlike B cell receptors that is antibodies, which bind to antigens alone, T cell receptors only bind to antigens that are bound to cell membrane proteins called major histocompatibility complex or MHC molecules. These MHC molecules take part in a process called antigen presentation. Similar to B cells, when a naive T cell encounters an antigen combined with an MHC molecule on a cell, the T cell proliferates and differentiates into memory T cells and various effector T cells. Memory B cells take care of future infections. T cells have subpopulations called T helper cells which have CD4 glycoproteins on their surface, and T cytotoxic cells which have CD8 glycoproteins on their surface. T helper cells help activate B cells to secrete antibodies, and macrophages to destroy ingested microbes. They also activate cytotoxic T cells to kill infected target cells. Natural killer cells do not directly attack the pathogens. They release perforins and granzymes, the proteins that cause the lysis of target cells and induce apoptosis in the infected cells. They are also involved in the destruction of tumor cells. Natural killer cells recognize unusual profiles of antigens displayed by tumor cells or virus-infected cells. They also recognize these cells coated with anti-tumor or antiviral antibodies and destroy the target cells. This is an example of a process known as antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. Natural killer cells are also an important source of a cytokine called interferon gamma, which helps in the development of effective antiviral immunity.